Hi, so it's no secret that businesses need money to operate, and motorsport teams are no different. How do they make money? Well, most of the time it's from sponsorships. And they're super important to teams because they keep them operating and competing at the highest level. Teams are always on the lookout for new sponsors and sometimes will bring on questionable sponsors if the price is right. This has led to a Viagra car in NASCAR and the rich energy fiasco in Formula One. So every now and again, bizarre sponsors will pop up for one race or two. Today, I want to talk about five times that celebrities decided to dip their hands in motorsport and sponsor an Indy car. Taylor Swift sponsored a car for the Detroit Bell Isle Grand Prix. It was Tony Kanaan's car, and he finished 20th and 13th, so it was respectable. It was done by her record label Big Machine Records for her 1989 album tour. The livery was pretty unique. Um, some people liked it, most didn't. I think it's okay. It's hard to make a livery for an album, specifically one where you want the person's face on it. The strange thing about this livery was this was to promote her tour and not her album because she was coming to Detroit that weekend. I just have a very hard time imagining the return of investment was anything more than maybe one or two tickets. Aerosmith sponsor Jeff Ward driving for Heritage Motorsports in the 2001 Indy 500. This one's a doozy because it created one of the worst liveries of all time, and Steven Tyler sang the national anthem that year, which is also regarded as one of the most unique performances. The car finished 24th just to add insult to injury. The British band, the Rolling Stones, decided to sponsor the British driver Justin Wilson for his last Indy 500 before he passed. Unfortunately, after qualifying 6th, they fell back to 22nd. And to me, this one was a really cool livery. I mean, it was a nice looking livery, it wasn't horrible. It was just really cool to have one of the biggest bands of all time in IndyCar. So next we have Kim Kardashian. And this one, I'll admit, is a little bit of a stretch, but I think it still counts. The company, Quick Trim, sponsored Graham Rahal in 2010 for the Indy 500, and they made diet pills. They had Kim Kardashian as their main spokeswoman. So while Kim K wasn't directly sponsoring the car, she just plastered on all their products and advertisements. She then went to the 500 wearing a Quick Trim jersey. So I feel like this one still counts because she is so directly tied in with Quick Trim. Ray Hall finished 12th, and at that time, that was his career best. Um, I know some of the people have criticized this livery for being a little too feminine. Uh, I think it's fine. I don't think it's anything too bad. So at first, I want to talk about Letterman. This one was raced in 2015 in D500 by Oriel Servia, and was done as a tribute for David Letterman, who just retired. It was done by his team, Ray Hall Letterman Racing, and for me, it's my favorite livery on the list. With a cartoon Letterman face on the car, and the words hashtag thanks Dave written on it too. For me, it's one of my favorite liveries because I think it looks really good, and I think it's really nice what they did for Letterman. He's done so much for the sport, and he deserves the recognition. Unfortunately for the team, Servia crashed and ended the race at 29th. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Um, but I really want to see you guys in the comments and tell me what your favorite livery was on the list and least, and tell me which celebrity I missed. Um, I'm sure I missed a couple. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.